everything comes from the one. Note, I'm only going to mark all the points of intersection of the vesica and its duplicates. So wherever a circle crosses a circle or a vesica is formed, we're going to use those points as our geometric points of reference. Here, we'll draw another line indicating the boundaries of the vesica. And here. And here. And here. So there's no randomness in choosing these points, they're all inherent the moment the vesica pisces is formed. Now the usual way of illustrating the square root formation is like this, the radius, the diagonal of the square, the root 3 is the height of the vesica, etc. There's a rather nice Root 6, I've discovered, simply derived from a root 3-sided square, its diagonal. It is 7, it is 8, it is 9 and 10. And they're all now within the vesica, no need to create the golden rectangle. But honestly, it kind of looks like a mess not pretty. What if they're all able to cross at the same point, the absolute center? Three already crosses. Four can cross this way. Five already crosses in the center. Six already does. Seven does so here. Eight here, 9, 10, and we also have a perfect root 12 and a perfect root 13. No root 11 is possible. Interesting. The only thing I don't like about this is the crossover of root 2 and root 8. I was looking for another way of illustrating it so that there was no overlap. If we create just two more lines that are precisely the same value as those vesica points, the red cross lines, they've only been moved from the other lines by the exact same amount, so it's not anything arbitrary. They are the same vesica value they are the missing part at the top of the vesica, the difference between root 3 and root 4 halved. Now, very interesting. This distance is root 3 plus 1, this is root 3 minus 1, and it gives the perfect square root of 8 here. So, just aesthetically, it's nice. We can now place root 8 there. One Shakespeare quote, of course, to finish it off. 